Now, Eyewitness Sports. All right, welcome into episode four of Double OT with Yanni and Mark. Mark Dondera, Yanni Krakis. Four episodes in, feeling good. This is good. It's going well. It's going strong. I'm ready to go. That's a rock. All right, let's start with uh, the big news as we tape this on a Wednesday. Draft lottery, the Celtics will pick third overall. Put yourself in a Celtics fan's shoes. Are you disappointed today? You know, Danny Ainge, I think, hit it on the head last night when he said after they dwindled down to 5-4 and they went to commercial, everybody got excited thinking that maybe the Celtics, for once, would have a, you yeah. know, a winning lottery ticket, so to speak. They didn't. They ended up at number three. I was disappointed for a moment, but ultimately, I don't think we can be disappointed because that's where they were slated to pick. Brooklyn had the third worst record. Yep. The Celtics were in line for the third pick, and they got the third pick. So, yeah, you're disappointed. You know, you'd like, to, you'd like things to go. You'd like to take advantage of the situation, but it's hard to be disappointed. If you had told me before the lottery, will you take three overall, I'd take it, right? But you get greedy. So of course. They're one of the top three, and they go to commercial, and you're like, let's go. I want one or two. And we're watching in the office last night, and then you see the Celtics at three, and you're just like, oh, so close, because the narrative is that Ingram and Simmons, Ben Simmons and Brendan Ingram, are upper echelon guys, and there's a big drop-off. So three doesn't have the currency with a trade or the value in a player being chosen that one and two does. But we were talking to our friend Kevin McNamara of the Providence Journal today, and he watches far more college basketball than you and me. Far more. He's not sold on Simmons. He thinks Ingram's a few years away. Maybe there isn't such a drop off from one and two to three. So while I thought the third pick, you know, wasn't what one and two is, maybe it's not that far off. I do not think there's a drop off. I will say um, I, d I did a little research today, went all, all right. in, and I looked at the 2012 Team USA roster, okay. basketball. Eight of the 12 guys who were on that roster were not number one or number two picks. And that list included Russell Westbrook, Kevin Love, Kobe Bryant, Chris Paul, Iguodala, Andre Iguodala, James yeah. Harden. So these guys and Carmelo Anthony, there are good players who are picked or who have been picked at three and four. There will be a player there, and I hope the Cel we're going to get into what we want the Celtics to do. I hope they'll do that. But as far as the disappointment goes, yeah. you know, Nobody really says, well, hey, at least we made it to the conference finals. Right. They all think about what could have been, and, you know, so there is some disappointment, but I don't think as a whole we can be disappointed. So the Celtics do have the number three overall pick in the draft next June, uh, in a month from now. What should they do with that selection? All right, so there's some talk about Buddy Heald, Jamal Murray, the score from Kentucky, maybe the big man from Israel who we don't know a whole lot about. I don't... I like Heald. I think he's a, a big-time scorer. He's a senior. He's, he's shown us a lot at Oklahoma. The kid from Israel. Um, Bender, is that his name? Yeah, Drogan. I can't trust him. Anyone you see on tape, do you remember Yi Jalin? The video of him like doing post moves against like a chair. Of course. And it's like, oh, this kid's really good against a chair. How's he going to be in the NBA? So this is going to be a huge homer move. Why don't they take Chris Dunn? That's your, you've been saying that for months. And you know what, as I'm going through these prospects and learning more about them, we've seen Dunn in person countless times. He is a 12-year NBA vet. Uh, we're going to talk about this in a bit. And I think he can be the Celtics point guard uh, with Isaiah Thomas. You probably have to move um, Marcus Smart. Marcus Smart, Smart like but that, I think yeah. you do it. Because I think Dunn maybe isn't as good as, as Smart defensively, but he's right there, better score, and a true point guard. I'm beginning to think that Chris Dunn might end up the best player in this draft. I don't know that. I think he could be John Wall. John Wall, three-time All-Star. John Wall, all-defensive player. I think his game correlates to John Wall. You mentioned the, the Euros, the, the international player. I'm not an international player guy. <laughs> I don't like the international players. I, I have a mental block about the international players. I think that they're soft and I can't get over it. And Dirk Nowitzki's a great player. Yep. Uh, Porzingis, Porzingis is great. I just don't think I want an international no, player. As the him. foundation of the Boston Celtics, I want an American player, and I think Chris Dunn or a guy like that. Should they trade, though? Well, here's what I think Danny Ainge will try to do. I think he will try to make a trade, 
but I don't think he'll be able to, and I think he will pick. He's going to go for the stars. He's going to go yeah. for a guy who, as he said in the press conference last night, a guy that would make it easy to trade that number three overall right. pick. He'll go, he'll aim high. I think he'll want to trade. I don't think ultimately anything will happen, and he'll make the pick. And I want him to make the pick. I think the best, the best course of action would be try to get the next star, try to get that guy who becomes a star that maybe has a better pro career than he did a college career. Yeah, I, I think Ainge is willing to take risks, but if the trade isn't there, we saw this last year, he was trying to move up, I think, to get Okafor and ultimately didn't because it wasn't the right thing. So, um, all right, back to Dunn. We touched on this a bit, but where do you see the profile of his NBA career going? I agree with all the coaches that we, we heard throughout the course of this entire season. I think he's going to be an all-star. I love his game. Uh, you know, of course, I'm not some scout, some basketball scout, but what I've seen, I've loved his game. He can pass, he can defend, he's athletic. He's not afraid. And you know what, to be honest, what he did in the NCAA tournament, yeah. I know we looked at those billboards all year. Get it done. I, I stood up and applauded his effort down the stretch because, let's not forget, Kevin Durant didn't lead his team to the Final Four. No. I think they won one game and got bounced. Yeah. Dunn got his team in the tournament. They finally won a game. He said goodbye. I think he's a good. I think he has all the makings of yeah. being a pro that makes all-star teams, that turns a franchise around. He's a prototypical NBA body. He's good size for a point guard. Like a you little, said, he can pass defense. I think he needs to work on his scoring. Uh, I think somewhere of a hybrid between a John Wall and Dwayne Wade. I think his offense is far off from where Dwayne Wade was. But completely solid, good teammate, you know, good player, tries hard. And um, I think he's going to be an all-star. I mean, you like the Chris Paul comparison. Um, I don't know from an assist. I, I don't. I don't. He's working his turnovers, too. Turns the ball over a lot. Okay. But I think, uh, you know, I think he can be an all-star. I don't compare Chris Dunn's game to Chris Paul. I was just comparing the situation okay. to Chris Paul. Um, I also think I loved what Danny Ainge said about taking the best available player, and I can't believe... And we've seen him at plenty of PC games this year. That's right. And I cannot believe all these people that don't want the best available player and want some guy who can protect the rim. Who cares? <laughs> who ca I, I, listen, your dad owned a restaurant, right? French yeah, restaurant. Shout out to it. <laughs> okay. If big v so if I'm craving he burgers, if I'm craving burgers and I go home, and there's some burger and fries there from a local burger joint, some chain. Yeah. Or I have the option because Big V made me an exquisite French meal. Duck LaRange. Perfect. I don't care right. what I was craving. Yeah. You don't pass up that meal. No. Okay, you take advantage of that meal. So I don't know why you would even think about taking a lesser player just because it might be something you kind of need. I guess the Celtics think they're too guard heavy, but... Well, you, 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 like you said, you trade Marcus Smart. You make yeah. the move. You get the best available player. Basketball is all about talent. We'll talk more about basketball later in this show. Uh, are we still uh... – well, Let's talk more about college basketball okay. right now. Dan Hurley, um, so your eye gives him an extension. He got an extension last year. Great coach. Do you think the school did the right thing right now? Yeah, I think you give him an extension because this is what the norm is now in college basketball. Hey, I'm extended through 2056. I'm going to be your head coach for the next 35 years. Ultimately, it doesn't mean anything. These, we've seen these contracts ripped up a million times. So-and-so goes to this program for a better job, and that school pays his previous school money to get him out and so forth. Uh, I think it shows more commitment to Dan Hurley. You know, this time last year, it's the same narrative. They're on the precipice of the NCAA tournament. Obviously, E.C. Matthews goes down, but I think Hurley's moving them in the right, right direction. Every year he's getting interest, whether it's St. John's or Rutgers last year, two teams close to his um, where he grew up in New Jersey. But um, you have to do it. But ultimately, the years don't matter. He's getting paid well starting in 2017, a million a year. But Ed Cooley at PC has got a lifetime contract. He, if, if Kentucky opens tomorrow, guess what? Ed Cooley's going to Kentucky. Do you think that Ed Cooley getting that lifetime contract put any pressure on URI? It's a good question. I don't think so. I mean, the, life, the thing PC has, the advantage is, as a private institution, they don't have to really divulge the numbers. Those mm -hmm. numbers are kind of out there. But um, what a coach wants now in college basketball or resources for his program, whether that's facilities, that's uh, money for his assistants so they can pay, chartering flights to games, these are all the amenities. These are the things Hurley's fighting for in addition to his pay because when he's recruiting kids, he wants to say, hey, we're going we're gonna to take a private jet when we go play um, – you know, Duquesne or St. Joe's or whoever. I don't know what um, 
specifically Dan Hurley's done at least on paper to earn this. I don't disagree with the school trying to keep their right. guy. I think he's a great coach. I think the program's going in the right direction. Obviously, injuries last year. We'll see what happens this year. We're all looking forward to it. But I don't disagree with what they've done. They're trying to keep a guy that they believe in in right. place. And like you said, that's kind of in this day and age in college basketball what you have it's to do. It's kind of just a PR move, essentially. It, exactly. And especially with, you know, Rutgers is that girl that keeps walking by and giving you the seductive eye. <laughs> She's, they won't go away. So um, you got to protect your happens, loved ones. That, that happens to you a lot. You Not me. No, no, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> All right. Uh, staying with college athletics, switching over to lacrosse, a big one. Over on the east side Saturday, Brown versus Navy, a shot at the Final Four. Brown would go to the Final Four first time since 1994. So the question is, first time they've won an NCAA tournament game since the 90s. They were number two in the country, so the standard is now up here. But if they don't, if they don't win Saturday, is it a disappointment? So are they playing with house money, so to speak? If they win, great, we get to the Final Four. But if they lose, it's already been a great season. What's, what's the mindset if you're Brown across? Well, they're, they're, I do not think they're playing with house money. And, yes, it would be a disappointment if they lose. Now, I get what you're saying. They, you know, they're not in this position all the time, so you're going to pat them on the back for a job well done regardless of what happens on Saturday. But, no, they're not playing with house money because house money to me – um, says that you're there, but you might, you know, Don't you belong, probably shouldn't yeah. be there, or your fortunate circumstances got you in a position that you really shouldn't be in, or, or it was a situation you're in that was totally unexpected. You know, it, it became clear pretty early on in this season that Brown Lacrosse was the real deal. Now they're in position to really make um, some history for the program. So, yeah, it'd be a huge disappointment. And, I, and we will salute them regardless of what happens. But, no, I don't think they're playing with house money. they got to get this done. Yeah, I think they need to win, too. You've come too far. You're two in the country. How often are you going to get a group of guys right. that are playing this well so cohesively? And Lars Tiffany is such a great interview. Such we, great we, sound We buddies. need his sound to continue he needs to roll. To, like, when you go to the gym, he needs to like be in your ear like, come on, Mark. You have bought into this program all year. You're on the, the doorstep of history. Um, they need to win. And I think they will win and get to the Final Four. And, you know, I think we know how good Brian is. They've gone to the tournament, what, three or four straight years in a row. And I think it would be great if Brown becomes, they went last year too, a perennial NCAA tournament team. And those two kind of, they play, you know, go every year. And we talked about this in a previous show, lacrosse gaining a lot of popularity. So I think they win. I think they need to win. I think they will win. Okay. Uh, I talked to Lars Tiffany on Wednesday, by the way. During the interview, he said that people, lacrosse fans, should come out to the game uh, this weekend because, you know, they're not they're not waiting for the next pitch out here. That's what he said. That was a dig at baseball. But we're going to talk about baseball, if that's okay, Coach. Um, let's talk about Jackie Bradley Jr., Boston Red Sox outfielder, absolutely on fire. Yanni, how good is JBJ right now? Well, I think he's playing better than he actually is. Is he as bad as he was last year when he couldn't hit the broad side of a barn? No. Is he as good as he is this year, 22-game hitting streak ongoing? Uh, no. I think he can be... An exceptional defender, which he already is. He probably should have got the gold glove last year, mm -hmm. but didn't play enough. Gold glover, 275 hitter, um, gets on base a good amount, hits for average, not great power numbers, but, you know, he's a seven hitter and plays great defense. And I think, you know, you're a two-time all-star. There are guys out there. You need a guy on your team who does the things Jackie Bradley does. You know, you were doing the show earlier, producing and all that, so you didn't have time, but I got some numbers for you. And I know, you know, he struggled early, but at the end of last year, Bradley Jr. Yeah. was excellent, and he carried that into this year. And listen to this year, Jackie Bradley Jr. compared to what Mike Trout is doing. We all know I have a man crush on Mike Trout. Is that a comparison? Great player. Mike Trout, eight home runs, Bradley Jr., six home runs, so he's two less there. He's got three stolen bases, does Trout. Bradley Jr. has two. But Bradley Jr. has a better average, more RBIs, less strikeouts, and a higher slugging percentage slugging. than Mike Trout. Wow. 594 to 541. JBJ, 333 to 308. 31 homers, uh, 31 RBIs, rather, to 27 RBIs. So right now, right now, Jackie Bradley Jr. is playing as well as... As Mike Trout, that is unbelievable. I In hope the he keeps it going. No less. And he's not a big guy. I love his game. I hope he keeps it going. He's really seemed to have I figured it out. I also root for guys who, like, you know, overcome some issues in their career. Like him, and he was in Pawtucket last year. He came up, you know, a couple years ago, and everyone thought he was going to be the next big thing. 
brought him back to reality, and now he's doing well again. Not that this is a big deal, but during Pawtucket Media Day last year, he sat there and did every interview yeah. with every newspaper. He was, and he he couldn't have been Respect thrilled that. to yeah. be there. He was, uh, you know, Prince rooting. George, Virginia's own. Okay. Um, all right, we're staying with baseball, and our friend Mike Monacavo and many others in the state of Rhode Island are big Yankee fans, and you know what? what? Growing up, Mark, yeah. you and I were both Red Sox fans. You hate when I lead with the Yankees. <laughs> Can't <laughs> lead do. with the Yankees, Mark. It's a Red Sox town. <laughs> they were the big, bad Yankees, 27 championships. George Steinbrenner, big, bad, big spending Yankees. You feared them. They won every year, went to the playoffs every year. And so this year, they're in last place right now. If they don't go to the playoffs this year, they didn't go three years ago, two years ago. Last year, they lost in the wild card. If they don't go to the playoffs this year, it'll be one playoff game, that being a wild card game, in four years for the New York Yankees. So our question is, have the Yankees fallen off since big George Steinbrenner passed on? Absolutely, they have. Absolutely. And I'm not one bit surprised. This is what happens. Have you checked in on the Los Angeles Lakers recently? The buses. Dr. Similar. Jerry Buss passes. He's got the kids running the show. Jim Buss is a disaster. <laughs> have you ever seen Jeannie Buss? She, I've seen her do interviews. I'm listening to her talk. I don't know what to say. She, I, I mean, she, good luck, LA Lakers. I know they have the number two overall pick. Mitch Kapchak seems uh, capable, but this situation is something we've seen many times and the Lakers is a perfect example and to tell you the truth you know Jonathan Kraft's been over, he's been around but I'm worried when Bob Kraft oh, goes yeah. because that man is a genius but and there's no you know those guys don't just you know pop up every day but let's talk about it from a baseball per I think you know coming from the top the edict we need to win now spend money that goes back to Steinbrenner but Cashman's a smart guy mm -hmm. they still have the money I is it just the players are getting too old is it the farm system when you look at their roster what are you seeing well yeah they've always had I feel like an older roster but I, I think it, it, a lot of it does go back to the boss he was the boss and he put that pressure on the organization. They haven't hit on some of those free agents. I mean, I know they made that big haul, Jacoby Ellsbury, Brian McCann, those guys, Carlos Beltran, they're not going to carry you now. They're too old. Also, the run in the 90s and early 2000s, they had the perfect blend of guys that came up the system, like Mariano and Jeter, and guys who they got via free agency. Um, Bernie came up through the system, Posada, right? And then they would sprinkle in the overpaid, high-priced guys that sometimes worked out, sometimes didn't. The Clemenses, the, the Randy Johnsons, the Kevin Browns. So now they don't have the guys coming up through the system, complemented with the high-priced guys. So it's kind of... And make no mistake about it, the ownership and the ownership situation, and not just in baseball, obviously in all sports, is vital. Important. And, you know, when the father, who was a genius, uh, is no longer in that position and it's left up to the kids... Not everyone can be King Griffey Jr. to bring Billy Martin back as Or Tim White. <laughs> Tim White. <laughs> okay. So let's move on. Kevin Falk. We talked about the Patriots. I mentioned the Crafts. Uh, one of the Crafts' favorite players, Kevin Falk, will be inducted into the Patriots Hall of Fame. Um, what's your favorite Kevin Falk memory? The funny thing about this today, and we were talking about this off camera, and this is quintessential Patriots, quintessential Kevin Falk. I don't have a Kevin Falk memory, which tells me he was so solid for so long doing so many different things that there isn't a play that stands out or resonates other than the ugly fourth and two play in Indy in 09 when they were stopped short. Listen, he's a guy you could always count on. He's a Patriot for life. Whenever you can tell how important a guy is to the Patriots when Bill Belichick talks about him and Belichick speaks glowingly about Kevin Falk. And he's a guy who could, if you needed a third and two, he'd get you third and two. If it was uh, second and six and, the, and Brady throws a little uh, bubble screen to him, he'd get you the first down. You need a big kick return, you're down one score in the fourth quarter, give it to you. Did it all solid. He was never a feature back, but um, he's the, like, if Belichick would say this, if I could have 53 Kevin Fox, it would be good. The tip of the cap to Pete Carroll, because I know yeah. he came under fire for, you know, his time in New England based on some of the moves he made, but he did draft him, and that was a huge pick. Uh, as you alluded to, he lo Belichick loved Kevin Falk. And I think another thing that was huge about Falk, and yeah, I have some memories. That, that game we talked about off camera, 0-2 Dolphins, and mm -hmm. over time he had a huge play there. It almost helped the Patriots into the playoffs that season. But Kevin Falk, you said he wasn't a featured back. I agree. But I think he did help 
ease the blow. He was drafted in 1999. That was the year after Robert Edwards hurt his knee. Yep. And Edwards was supposed to be the next big Patriots running back after Curtis Martin. Edwards came in, hurt his knee. His career was essentially over. You get Falk. It kind of took a little while. But he's your he's a running back yeah. on your team for the next decade. So the year after that you lose Edwards, you that was a huge Antoine piece. Smith, Corey Dillon, right. all the guys through the years. Falk was there. Falk through was them there all. for as a running back until 2011. Unbelievable, a leader, a patriot. I, I applaud him. <laughs> all right, let's switch gears to the NBA, uh, the playoffs, ongoing Eastern Western Conference Finals, and uh, that is not the NBA logo. That is actually <laughs> is one of color? our designs. It's. It's almost it's very abstract. It's colorful. Okay. <laughs> All right. Who is your NBA Finals right now? We have Cleveland and Toronto, very one-sided game one in that one. We have OKC and uh, Golden State ongoing in game two as we speak. How do you see the finals going? Well, it's going to be Cleveland because the East is embarrassing. I can't believe this is professional sports. They haven't wow. lost in the playoffs. They haven't lost. That's right. They haven't lost. So I don't know what you want me to say. They haven't lost. This is the playoffs. So I don't know why that's the, I, the, at least in the NBA you do eventually get a juicy matchup. We have that in the West. We'll have that in the finals. It'll be Cleveland versus. Here's the most interesting thing for me. Cleveland right now is so desperate. desperate. LeBron is there. They need to win now. OKC, so desperate. They've been there. They've been in the finals. They need to win. Is Durant staying? They need to win now. And obviously, we know Golden State, one of the all-time teams, are trying to repeat. They have a chip on their shoulder because the Cavs weren't fully healthy. That is keeping me in this. I love the West. The East, I'll see you in the finals. But, yeah, I think it'll be Cleveland and Golden State. Yeah, I think Golden State wins. I think that was a big win for OKC in game one. But um, historically good, this Golden State team, 73 wins. I think if OKC, if they, if they can go up 2-1, so when it goes back to OKC, if they win, I'm sorry, if they go up 3-1, I think they win the series. But as long as it's within a game, 1-1, 2-1, I think Golden State wins this because, um, you know, I think maybe they needed that loss in game one. Hey, we're not invincible. We're not mm -hmm. Teflon. Uh, sure, we've won 73 games, but, you know, this is a really good, desperate team. Many were saying OKC maybe would dismantle after this year, so they're giving you everything you got, but I think Golden State knows what's at stake. Steph Curry, you know, he's still coming back from that injury. He's going to be he's going to be raining threes, and it's going to be Golden State, Cleveland. And then I may pick Cleveland. I'm going to have to think more about that. Oh, yeah, that, that, that's Cleveland a separate topic. We'll, we'll talk get, about we'll that later. If or when that happens. And just one more point. The refs need to step up. The referee at yeah. the end of these games, unbelievable. And I'm not even a basketball aficionado, but I know some of the – Russell Westbrook traveled oh, back in game one of that. 100%. And there was another foul call. There was a Spurs here. These refs at the end of these games, disgraceful. So they need to uh, really step up here. If we're going to see any kind of good basketball and feel good about the basketball we've seen. Um, well, we didn't feel good about this as we shift gears to golf. Final topic here, Tiger Woods. He was at Congressional. Uh, part, was he hosting that tournament? He was a, yeah, one of the hosts. Yeah, so it's one of the... So the sponsors wanted him to take a ceremonial tee shot there from about 100 plus yards over water, par three. And he put three shots in the water. No pressure, ceremonial shot. All three in the water. How far gone is Tiger Woods at this point? I think that moment was rock bottom for him. I'll tell you why. Missing the cut at all these tournaments. Oh, my back. Oh, my knee. All right, Tiger, you're hurt again. And if you've read the Wright Thompson piece on ESPN, many of those injuries he attributed to training with the Navy SEALs. We all know his complete meltdown since backing up into a hydrant and not winning a major since when he could have caught Jack Nicholas. This is so bad because... A lot of people, we didn't watch Willie Mays, right, Richard Young. They say, like, you didn't know Willie Mays was done until maybe he was, like, with, with the, the Mets, Mets and yeah. a complete nightmare. And then you're like, this, we should have known. This guy was completely done. I think you hold on to the past. We all want to know and love the Tiger that was winning 14 majors, and we think he's going to come back. Mm -hmm. And then in this moment, you know, he's coming back from his next injury. Maybe he'll win another major, another tournament. A ceremonial shot. That is a shot you put on the green nine out of ten times and three I'm times in a row. The g world's best golfer, arguably of all time, with Jack Nicholas. But not puts only puts it in the drain in the water three times. And that, how <gasps> embarrassing is that for him? In tournament play, you can at least attribute it to he's there saying, "Guys, I'm feeling good. I'm coming back from injury." Water, water, water. 
unbelievably bad look for Tiger. I don't think he'll win another major. He may win another tournament here or there. Listen, I'm rooting for him to, to pull a jack in 86 and win a Masters at 40-plus. I just don't think it's going to happen. We'd all love to see it. What's most stunning to me, and maybe it's just the game of golf. Maybe it's just golf. What's most stunning to me, though, and we've seen this with other great athletes, when they, when they decline, their physical skills decline. Yeah. Peyton Manning was as mentally sharp as ever, oh, though. Of course. You know, even Kobe Bryant, the basketball IQ is there. Tiger mentally is gone. He's bad. Gone. gone. Yeah. And maybe again it's golf because golf that can happen easier than any mm. other sport but he is so gone. I'm hearing him talk about you know oh I miss being out there with the guys. Like I, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear it. And the other thing we this taught me something. Now what we need to do is embrace the jerks. Embrace the the I don't want to say it that way. Embrace the jerks who are in sports right now because I miss the Tiger Woods who used to be kind of ornery he and Kobe Bryant. He would have a couple strokes over any golfer just mentally walking onto the course. I'm yeah. Tiger Woods. I'm better than you. He was nasty. He, he, was, you know, he wanted to step on your throat. And I miss that Tiger. I miss that you know, from Kobe Bryant at the end. We need to embrace Bryce Harper because he's kind of a Make jerk. Baseball fun again. And he's right. And we'll miss it when he's no longer. If he gets soft at the end of his career and starts talking nice about everything and everyone, we're going to miss when we're going to say, well, oh, it's I the NBA culture. Everyone's best friends because the AU circuit. Well, yeah. In the I'm 90s, sick of that. Barkley in the, uh, I'm sorry, Jordan versus the Knicks can you imagine, hated each other. Can you imagine Jordan? Celtics, Pistons. Can you imagine Michael Jordan being like, hey, you guys want to like team up and play each other? No, he wanted to <laughs> eat your. Yeah. Your home and you know he wanted to crush you. Well, yeah, I, I, yeah. I wouldn't mind asking. Does he Tiger, win another major? Mm, does he win another major championship? championship? No. No. Yeah, I don't think so either. Fourteen. No. And and some things you read in here is he's kind of content with this is maybe it. You want to ask him though? Do you ever go back and just watch videos of when you were awesome? Because I do. I just wonder if he does. It's gonna be tough. I, I root for him, but it's it's over. All right, that was a, uh, I think, maybe our longest episode so far on Double OT in episode four. A lot to talk about. And this is, you know, May, which we get cooking and football season and stuff. Ooh. Oh, now. That's right. Uh, this episode in its entirety can be seen on WPRI.com, where you may be watching it right now. We like to break up segments and post them online on Facebook and Twitter at Yanni Krakis at Mark Dondero. How's that Facebook page going? I, who cares? I'm looking at, I'm listening to this music, and it's just excellent. Well done. Thank you, Kev. Is this Johann Sebastian Bach? Could be. Maybe uh, Mozart. I like Bach. <laughs> Big Bach. Tony Petraka in to do weather in just a moment. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the web.